Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the inaugural Small Biz uh, Cybersecurity Summit for Small Business. And my name is Aitha Markuli, Executive Director of the Pikes Peak Small Business Development Center. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who have made the effort to be here today. Cybersecurity is a new love of mine for those of you who know me. Not only because geeking out makes me happy, but geeking out to help small businesses is exactly what the Small Business Development Center is all about. Today marks a day that our community has gotten together to support small business, to educate, create awareness, and help our community fight cyber threats together. To go off script a little bit, I have to say thank you to the chambers that are represented in this room, Colorado Springs Business Chamber, Tri Lakes Chamber, Manitou Chamber, Eastern Plains Chamber, the Black Business Network, the Black Chamber, the Women's Chamber of Southern Colorado, and a special shout out to Ronnie Gallette, who will be here later, for all of them for sending out messages after messages after messages in support of this event. Because as a community, we know that you all need to be here along with us learning about the latest in cybersecurity to protect our small businesses. I'd like to start off by thanking our sponsors for the event, the Small Business Administration, who provided us with $50,000 to start off this program this year to kickstart our program. The City of Colorado Springs, who funded us with $10,000 just for this event. Colorado Business Development Foundation and the Colorado Springs Business Journal, who helped us all with not only funding, but helping to get the word out about this event. A special shout out to the Colorado Springs Business Journal, who continually writes and supports about cybersecurity and how it will help us all in our community. I'd also like to thank Murray Security Services and ABC Bank for their sponsorship for our happy hour. Thanks to them, we'll have a nice, cool, refreshing drink at the end of this very long day. We'll all need that. <laughs> the 365 Grand Club for providing discounted lodging for our speakers. Pikes Peak Regional Building Department for providing our swag bags at check-in. So as you collect all your cool swag items, you have a bag to put them in. Techwares, founder Drew Johnson. Is Drew still here? Hi, Drew. Who fulfilled our last minute request and hope to, our last minute request and our hope to have really amazing centerpieces for this event and our unique speaker gifts for our keynote. So if you look on the center of your tables, those were all created by Drew in the last 24 hours. <laughs> He's truly amazing. So read more about TechWars and your program. Uh, finally, the Pinery at the Hill. I always have to say a special thank you for them who become family to the Small Business Development Center. As you know, we hold all of our large events here. Mackenzie, Michelle, and Brandon there in the back. Uh, make it really easy to put on an event with all of my last minute changes. So thank you, Brandon. <laughs> okay, so why and how is the SBDC involved in cybersecurity training, do you ask? We received a technology designation as a network in 2016, so 25 states nationwide with SBDCs are tech designated. You can read all about our SBDC tech source program and designation in your program. I won't go into all that detail because I have 11 minutes left. The Pikes Peak, <laughs> I'm timing myself on this one, be proud of me. The Pikes Peak SVDC was designated with our tech source program as a lead on cybersecurity training for the state. Since then, we have created monthly workshops, webinars, statewide summits, and piloted an eight week cybersecurity awareness and implementation series with the Department of Homeland Security. The Better Business Bureau, hi Jonathan, Jonathan Liebert's here in the back, CEO, is currently creating a badge of cyber recognition to only be awarded to businesses that have gone through our eight-week series and who have identified risk through a full-on risk assessment that we have conducted for those businesses, implemented changes with a managed IT solution, and who, as a business, continues to maintain their infrastructure year after year. That's very important, as we all know, um, to be cyber secure. We plan on licensing this program statewide, nationally, and taking it internationally online in the next year. Consultants who have been with us from the start, please stand if you are here. I know they're coming in and out today, but these are the people that made me look smart because <laughs> I am not the one who knows everything about cyber, but I'll tell you what our consultants and experts do, and they're here today. 
They include Mr. Rodney Gallette Jr. from IT Solutions. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, hey, Rodney. <laughs> Dr. Sean Murray, Murray Security Services. Corinne and Eric Mann, Corvus Technologies. Mark Spencer, Tiffin Hoffman Associates, Bonnie Moss, SMB ISAL, and Jennifer Kurtz with Manufacturers Edge. So a special thanks to them for helping us create a program that is working very, very well across the state of Colorado. So with that said, our program is called Cyber CYA. So it's really important you remember that because it's, it's fun. Cyber security to cover your assets, right? <laughs> So, make sure you remember that name because it's getting bigger and it's getting stronger and we're here to bring you the best of education. Okay, so now is the really not fun part, is all the admin items I need to tell you about today. <laughs> so, this is, this is going to be a lot of detail, so stop me if I need to slow down. Okay, so starting off, in your bags, you have the Colorado Springs Business Journal, a day earlier than the rest of your community, which is very special. There's a great story on blockchain on the front page. Make sure you talk with Amy and her team to get signed up as a subscriber if you have not already done so. Information from the 365 Grand Club, some swag, and your agenda. So this is where it gets a little complicated. In the middle of your agenda, there is a revised agenda, which shows our new schedule of events for the day. Our keynote this morning, Margie Graves, will now be speaking before our closing statements by Vance Brown with the National Cyber Center therefore pushing up our schedule. Please review your schedule. We still have a number of brain breaks built in and promptly move to the next location throughout the day as indicated. That is very, very important. We have a full schedule for you and we're starting right on time at each one. So we'll be pushing you to the next thing to keep you busy and keep your blood moving. The workshop description pages have the old time still on them <laughs> in your program. This was a change last night. But please be aware that the descriptions are the same and we're still running all of those workshops. Okay? Please utilize your breaks wisely. Get a good stretch. Take a walk around this amazing facility. Visit our amazing exhibitors on our left. And buy some techwares and return promptly to your next workshop. <laughs> okay, so today is packed. We're going to feed you and hydrate you all day. In the back of the room, there's coffee. There'll be water in all the rooms. There'll be snacks throughout the day. So no one should have a lack of energy, right? <laughs> Feel free to get up and stretch as needed, head, back, head to the back, like I said, and get coffee. We are an informal type of program, as SBDC always is. We want you to be comfortable. We want you to be able to get up and stretch, as I mentioned, and get the things you need done. If you need to take a call, again, it's a beautiful day outside. So please go outside <laughs> to take your call. <laughs> we would appreciate that. In addition to everything, uh, we have our consultants ready to meet with you one-on-one -on -one while you are here. Please sign in with Becky Hager, who is at our front desk. You met her at check-in along with my mom. Thanks, mom, for being here today. Um, so please sign in with her for a consulting spot so you get one-on-one -on -one consulting and education for your business. We have one more schedule change for you. In Bella Vista upstairs, because of our time changes today, one of our, our first speaker, Gretchen Bliss, she's actually going to be speaking on session two. Okay, so if you're looking to do workforce development and ISAL training, that's in Bella Vista. So in that room, again, the first session will be, what is an ISAL and why does every business need one? Presented by Bonnie Moss. The second session, will be Cybersecurity's Everyone's Job by Gretchen Bliss. And then the third session will be Assigning a Cybersecurity Officer in Your Organization by Trevor Deerdorf. So please make note of those changes. It's also posted on the front of that room. So thank you for bearing with us with these changes. That's the fun of running a large event, right? Okay, so lunch will be served at 11.40. Uh, there are restrooms located on both floors an elevator located on the north end of the building. Uh, Becky Hager, myself, and Brianne Smith are here today to help you, so just find us towards the front of the room. And with that, I am going to introduce your next speaker. Okay? Vin, uh, Vinny Persichetti with the Colorado Springs Chamber and EDC um, is a good friend of ours and supporter of small business. Uh, Vinny, you have a very long bio, so I'll let you come up here <laughs> and um, introduce yourself and talk a little bit about the Colorado Springs Chamber in EDC. Yeah, <laughs> this is not an indictment against your height. I'm just adjusting. Well, good morning. 
And thank you, Aitha. I'm Vinny Persichetti. I'm the Director of Cybersecurity Programs for the Colorado Springs Chamber and EDC. It's my pleasure to welcome you here this morning. Aitha has put together a first-class program that is sure to result in a great day. And she's feeding us as well, so that's a bonus. At the Chamber and EDC, our program is focused on growing the city's cybersecurity community. We've partnered with key stakeholders throughout the community, from local government, educational institutions, and industry to take a coordinated approach in developing and bringing national awareness to this ecosystem. We launched a website, coloradospringscybersecurity.com, to represent the assets that are here, provide resources and job information for those looking to join the workforce, and to assist our transitioning military members to stay in our community through opportunities in cybersecurity. Additionally, we have resources for consumers who would like to learn more about cybersecurity and actions you can take to ensure your family's data is protected. If you would like to learn more about the Chamber and EDC's program, we have a booth directly to my left. Feel free to join us uh, or visit us during one of the breaks. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce our mayor. John Southers has served as mayor of Colorado Springs since 2015. In that time, the city has seen incredible progress, taking historic measures to repair its roads and infrastructure, address long-standing stormwater issues, and generating record numbers of new jobs and economic development. Under his leadership, Colorado Springs has also been named the number two best place to live in America and the number one most desirable place to live by US News and World Reports. Mayor Southers has been a champion of the city's identity as Olympic City USA and continues to support the growing cybersecurity presence that is here today. Please join me in welcoming our 41st Mayor of Colorado Springs, John Southers. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my thanks to Aikta and to my cousin Vinny uh, for that uh, introduction. Um, and thank all of you uh, for being here for this first ever cybersecurity summit uh, for small businesses. The city of Colorado Springs does very proudly support small businesses, and one of the ways we do that is by supporting the SBDC and its programs. We've been a partner with SBDC for over 10 years, and they've proven uh, to, do a, to be a great partner in providing support to small businesses of all levels and size and across all industries. This year, the city increased our funding to support some of their programming that aligns with the city's strategic goals, uh, such as ACTA indicated this uh, cybersecurity meeting. And one of those areas uh, is cybersecurity and uh, small business education. So I'm glad to be here today and see this summit taking place because cybersecurity is one of the most critical needs in our world today, and we are absolutely convinced that our community is going to play a very important role in cybersecurity. So whether you're a business of one or 100 employees, uh, or even more than that, cybersecurity should be a top concern. The fact is, uh, if you're connected to the internet, you're a target, and smaller businesses maybe even more so, because the bad actors out there know many small businesses often don't have the proper security measures in place. Here are a few startling numbers for you. The average cost of a data breach in the United States today is $3.86 million. Global ransomware demands uh, in 2017 exceeded $5 billion. And corporate cybersecurity damages are projected to hit six trillion dollars by 2021. If that scares you just a little bit, you've come to the right place. Uh, when it comes to cybersecurity, it's not a matter of if you're going to be breached, but when you're going to be breached and what you're gonna do about it. And we have experts right here in Colorado Springs who can help you out. I'll leave all the security details to the experts you'll hear from, and I'm sure that you'll hear, uh, you'll learn a lot from them today. What I'd like to share with you this morning is the bigger picture of cybersecurity in Colorado Springs. Cybersecurity is not only important for small businesses, large businesses, government, 
or any other organization, but the industry is becoming an increasingly important part of the Colorado Springs economy. We are aggressively pursuing a community vision to become not just Olympic City USA, but also a major cyber hub for the country. This year, as was just indicated by my cousin Vinny, uh, U.S. News and World Report uh, rated Colorado Springs as the second best place in America to live and number one most desirable city in America. And we rated the highest of any city in quality of life, but also ranked very high in affordability, job opportunities, and other economic criteria. A major factor in Colorado Springs' success has been the job creation that's been achieved in the past four years which was one of my top three priorities when I became mayor in 2015. After years of stagnant uh, job and wage growth, the Pikes Peak region is now one of the best economies in the country. We've created over 25,000 jobs since June of 2015, an average of about 7,500 jobs per year. And we're talking about very good jobs. Uh, cybersecurity personnel are among the most needed positions. It's estimated we have uh, at least 1,000 cybersecurity uh, uh, positions open in the Colorado Springs area. Uh, our other major openings, by the way, we have 1,500 openings for registered nurses, almost 1,000 for software engineers, about 900 for systems engineers. This week, as many of you know, we were named uh, number 20 tech town in the U.S. due to the job opportunities for IT workers and our desirable quality of life. Thumbtack uh, recently ranked us the number four most uh, bi uh, business friendly uh, city in the country. These kinds of recognitions create a powerful draw for entrepreneurs and the businesses that will start and build in Colorado Springs. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics projects cybersecurity jobs to increase 18% uh, through 2024, which is more than twice the average of other occupations. One report is estimating that there will be 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs by 2021. Uh, and like I said, these are good paying jobs and employers are willing to make significant investments in qualified candidates. The average annual salary for an information security analyst in Colorado Springs right now is $101,000. Cyber threats to our world are real. And the only real way to win uh, is the development and deployment of great technology. And the answer to that is innovation, entrepreneurship and job creation. And Colorado Springs wants to be and is on the forefront of that effort. Colorado Springs is already one of the top five cities in America for cybersecurity jobs with uh, over 125 uh, cybersecurity companies in the Pikes Peak region. I fully uh, expect that to grow as we're also attracting startups, venture capitalists and investors. Uh, who all want to be part of this growing uh, and vital industry. The reason Colorado Springs is so suited uh, for the cybersecurity industry is our unique synergy between the military, private industry, and our local colleges and universities. Our long history with cybersecurity was initiated by the military commands in our region that de depend on information security. The Air Force Space Command provides space and cyberspace capabilities for the Joint Force in the nation. The U.S. Northern Command NORAD Joint Cyber Center provides cyber response and recovery support. Our city also has a rich history in advancing uh, the information technology industry, from data centers to financial services to insurance carriers and, of course, the military. Cybersecurity is critical and has led to the creation of robust uh, cyber industry with some of the world's largest and best cyber companies right here in Colorado Springs, ranging from very large uh, to very small. Names like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Bocor, Route 9B, Boeing, and many, many others. These companies do things in the cyber realm ranging from managing military satellite operations and control systems to da data center control and protection. A few years ago, the National Security Center selected Colorado Springs for its home. Our reputation as a top cyber city has been significantly raised by being the home of the NCC, which has three important missions. They work with government, military, and industry to promote cyber awareness and help shape public policy. They partner with startup accelerators and industry to promote job creation, and they're also focused on educating, training, and equipping the cyber workforce 
uh, through their work with uh, K-12 colleges and other partners. And I understand you'll hear from Vance Brown, the executive director of the National Security uh, Center, uh, as one of your last speakers today. On the job front, the NCC works very closely with Exponential Impact, a nonprofit organization that works specifically with companies developing technologies in blockchain, cybersecurity, and artificial intelligence. They provide mentoring, seed funding, and leadership development, and part of their goal is to encourage their startups to make the Pikes Peak region their home. We also have, as you all are aware, the Catalyst Campus providing innovators with the support, education, and workforce training, and attracting government grants and private funding to create business growth in the aerospace and defense industry. A lot of the focus going forward is going to be around workforce development, because to be competitive nationally, we need to be able to provide that workforce. And one way we're doing that is to lo uh, leverage the local transitioning military community. Many of the people getting out of the military in Colorado Springs are ideal uh, for many of the positions due to their military training. Another big factor that will continue to contribute to our success is our local academic institutions. No less than five local institutions are National Security Agency certified centers of academic excellence for information assurance. The University of Colorado, Colorado at Colorado Springs, the United States Air Force Academy, Regis University, Colorado Technical University, and most recently, Pikes Peak Community College. The University of Colorado at Colorado Springs has a unique cyber relationship with the Army Reserve and is home to cyber research programs sponsored by the Department of Homeland Security and Department of Defense. The Air Force Academy has incredible uh, research and development capabilities. Uh, the Air Force Cyber Works Design and Innovation Center educates airmen and cadets while partnering, partnering with industry to solve cyber problems facing the nation. Colorado Technical University offers master's degree programs in cyber science with concentrations in computer system security, database systems, and software engineering. Regis University offers an NSA certified information assurance program with a cybersecurity specialization. Webster University offers a master's degree in cybersecurity and graduate certificates in cybersecurity and threat protection. Uh, so Colorado is one of the highest concentrations of CAE approved two and four year schools outside of our nation's capital. We're also working uh, to expose middle and high school students uh, to careers in cybersecurity and provide hands on opportunities for industry and community people to learn more. Colorado Springs has the talent to continue to grow its cybersecurity presence. And by working with the NCC and our institutions of higher learning, this region will lead the way in cyber workforce development. Remember, cybersecurity professionals are needed in all industries. Nearly every company in every industry has a need for some level of cybersecurity services. From education to law enforcement, the need is there, and we must begin uh, the process of providing the workforce uh, development to fill all those needs. The future looks bright. You know, thinking about cybersecurity and the potential impacts can feel, uh, well, sometimes a bit gloomy. I remember the first uh, uh, National Cybersecurity Symposium I went to, and the first presentation was all about the Internet of Things and all the advancements uh, in the Internet of Things, and then the second presentation was the consequences of not having cybersecurity keep up with advances in the cyber, uh, with the Internet of Things. And they gave demonstrations of people hacking into your personal security system at your home. Uh, they gave a demonstration of a, of a, uh, a self-driving car being driven off the road by a hacker. You know, uh, what good is... Uh, uh, this innovation, if you're, uh, you know, a self-driving uh, car, if your ex-wife can kill you uh, by driving you off the road. Uh, we've got to have the cybersecurity development uh, to keep up with all this. So just a few weeks ago, uh, when we uh, hosted the National Cyber uh, Symposium at the Broadmoor, we made sure we had a more optimistic theme. Hope for the future, we called it. And that's exactly what we have 
in Colorado Springs uh, around cybersecurity. A great deal of hope for the future. I'm extremely proud to have the world's leading experts uh, right here in Colorado Springs discussing and developing the best strategies and solutions to protect our networks and our nation. When we began the cybersecurity, uh, National Cybersecurity Center a couple years ago and started looking for board members with national credentials, it was unbelievable to find that a, that, that a couple of folks were right here in Colorado Springs. Uh, some of you may know Mark Weatherford, who's on the, uh, the NCC board. And it uh, turns out this guy, you know, was uh, very much a, a part of uh, the setting up uh, cybersecurity capabilities in the Department of Homeland Defense and one of the leading consultants in the country, and he's based right here in Colorado Springs. Uh, and there are a tremendous number of such uh, experts right here in our community. Uh, and of course, um, we've got, as I indicated, uh, the universities developing our future workforce. We've got the accelerators driving innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, and we've got strong local government support. Uh, we've got uh, five critical military installations and more than 125 private sector cybersecurity and IT uh, companies. Uh, I would, you know, as I look at our future in the military, a lot of people are, uh, I, I was very concerned when I became ma uh, mayor in 2015 and saw that you know, virtually 50% of our economy, uh, having come out, uh, come out of the recession, uh, was dependent on our military presence, federal presence. I'm pleased to say we're probably down about 45% and, and moving a little lower. But what I love about uh, our military missions here uh, are there, uh, these aren't uh, the types of missions that are going to go away. Um, you know, the Air Force Academy is not going away. Uh, 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 Space Command is just going to become a bigger and bigger player. Uh, NORAD, NORTHCOM. I will tell you, uh, I think we caught a big break uh, a couple weeks ago when the Army decided to put a, a striker uh, force here instead of a armored uh, uh, force because as somebody at the Pentagon who called me that morning to say what was going on, you got the Army of the future, Fort Bliss got the Army of the past. Uh, so I feel very good about um, you know, the, the military presence and how it's going to fit right in with our cybersecurity um, uh, emphasis. We really do have a tremendous recipe for success uh, here in Colorado Springs with the synergy between military, uh, education, and academia. Um, I wish uh, all of you uh, here today success and security uh, in your business endeavors uh, because increasingly success is going to be tied to security. Um, so I know you'll learn a lot uh, from the upcoming presentations. Uh, I really am very much impressed by the size of the turnout today. I think it's uh, an indication of the momentum that we've got uh, in the, uh, this area of the relationship between uh, business and cybersecurity in our uh, community. Um, so I'm very pleased to have had the opportunity to spend a few minutes with you this morning. Please enjoy the day. Take care. Thank you.